מבקש ילדתי הקטנה, ועל מה כן אלמן החלום? על שוב אחיונים שם בקצה הגינה, לגברי אחים לא אדום. על שוב אחיונים שם בקצה הגינה, לגברי אחים לא אדום. שוק, שוק, שוב אחיונים לא היה לנו מול חלוננו. והיינו אשרינו פחות בודדים, נוהב זה תזרוק שתיים יונים, כי שתיים יוננו. חדש מי רבה, ומעדי ברא קירותי, וימליך מלכותי, ויצמח פורקני, ויקרב משיחי. וחייכון וביומיכון ובחיי דכל בית ישראל, בעגלה ובזמן קריב, ואמרו אמן. יש מי רבה מבורך לעולם ולמי עלמיה. יתברך וישתבח ויתפאר ויתרומם ויתנשא ויתהדר ויתעלה ויתהלל שמא דקודשה וריחו לילה מן ברכתה ושירתה תושבחתה ונחמתה דאמירן בעלמה ואמרו אמן יש למה רבה מן שמיה וחיים טובים עלינו ועל כל ישראל ואמרו אמן עושה שלום במרומיו הוא יעשה שלום עלינו ועל כל ישראל ואמרו אמן
הרבה פנים, כל כך הרבה אוזניים, ואין לי מי לשיר, שרים תמיד לשניים, וכשהשניים מסתלקים, שרים אל השמיים, אני לא בוכה. For my dear Ima, my mom. None of you know my Ima except Auric and the kids, and so I would like to shed some light on her life and personality. Ima was born in 1930 in Israel. She was the youngest of all her brothers and sisters that were born in Sana, the capital of Yemen. When she was born, there were new immigrants in Tel Aviv. and they made a living by cleaning houses and offices. My grandma did not know how to read and write, and my grandma lost six of her new born babies. Such a harsh life was back then, and this is the life into which my mom was born. My, my mom grew up in one room apartment, and the bathroom was outside the apartment, and Ima used to tell me stories how she had to wake up her older brother Yosef during the night because she was scared to go out by herself to the bathroom. They hardly made a living. However, it was a very loving family and my grandma used to cook and make food for all the new immigrants from Yemen that came after them to Israel. My Ima decided she wanted to become a professional and not to clean houses, and she became a dressmaker. When she met my father, even though it was traditional to get married first, she told my dad she will not get married until they buy their own apartment. My father came from a family that owned a two-story house, and all the kids, even after they got married, got a small unit in the house. She refused. She told my father, Motke, we will both save our salaries and we'll get married when we have enough money. My father um, used to work, I guess that back then they got cash money and he used to put it in his pocket and spend all his money having fun with his friends. Um, so you can guess who really called the shots in, in the family. My father's family were very surprised How come she does not want to live with them? And his friends were mad that he had no more money to spend on them. It took mom and dad three years to raise enough money for down payment, and she insisted to live in the north part of Tel Aviv, away from the family. You see, the schools were far better there. She instilled in each of us, her children, one should thrive for better education and pay the price. My mother worked all her life, even after she retired. But she had time for everything. She raised two brothers and myself. She loved life. She used to go to dance twice a week, and then to the movies, and then to the theaters. She would never say no to a trip in the invitation in Israel and outside the country. She had many friends. She loved to cook and bake, and she had an open house. A woman was filled with action. For me, Ima was my best friend and confident. I always felt safe when she was around. She was my true cheerleader, cheering my successes and such a delight and pride. I remember when I was in middle school, I got for the first time a perfect score. Boy, I was so happy and naturally wanted to keep it up. So before every exam, I used to tell my mom 
that I feel I'm not ready and don't know enough. And she used to tell me that the brain is like a pushke. When it's empty with few coins, it's very noisy. And so if I still have room in my head to make all that nonsense noise of insecurity, better I should sit and study some more to fill my head with knowledge. So that like a full pushke, there will be no room for that noise. After 20 years of medical school, PhD, and training programs in Israel and in America, let me tell you, it is still an important lesson I deliver to my kids. And to end up, I would like uh, to, to read a, a song. Chava Alberstein, one of the most important singers in Israel, wrote her version of Missing Her Parents. I chose to adopt her amazing song and words to me and to you, Ima. Missing Ima. By the end of the day, I have no one to call and tell how it was at work. And mom will not ask, did you have a tough day? And what did you eat for lunch? And when someone says a nasty thing about me, I'm still afraid that mom should not hear, that mom should not know. I want to be a good girl. I do not cry. I only keep missing her. I really do. And at the house, you don't hear anymore the sound of her sewing machine. And no longer we can have a cup of coffee and a cake of five o'clock. And never again her hand will be raised to wave me goodbye as I go down the staircase from our house. And as a fellow doctor referring your patient just to me, I still hope that mom already heard that she's truly proud of me. I want to be a good girl. I do not cry, I only keep missing her, I really do. And the day passed, carried away by the flow of the river called time. Life, children, achievements, and happy occasions tend to wipe tears off my eyes. And when I ask for mom, my eyes will turn up to the skies. I do not cry. I only keep missing you. I really do. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. היו, היו כאן פעם שקמים, חולות מסביב וגם נוף. העיר תל אביב של אותם הימים, הייתה בית בודד על החוף. ויש לפעמים נערכו ישיבות, מתחת שקמים אז בצל. וליד העצים צחקו הבנות. וענו בזמרה היי עלי. כן זהו, כן זהו, זה גן השקמים. היו גם כאלה, היי אז בימים. גידלה תל אביב מסביב הפרברים, הכל בתוכנן ונבדק. נבנו בכבישים, נשכחו השקמים, והלבין אז ראשם מאבק. הכל כאן נבנה בקצבו של הדור, חנויות ובתי שחקים. אך אם רק נפנה מבטנו אחור, ניזכר בשקמים ירוקים. כן זהו, כן זהו, זה גם השקמים. היו גם כאלה, אי אז בימים. היום השקמים נעלמו ואינם, 